Dr. Cindy Miller, and today we will be discussing the phases of a cardiomyocyte action potential. Before watching this video, please be sure that you have viewed Part 1, Cardiomyocyte Ions. In the last video, we examined the three ions responsible for cardiomyocyte action potential, sodium, potassium, and calcium. The movement of these ions across the plasma membrane is controlled in part by voltage-gated channels, which will open and close due to changes in the membrane potential. When these channels open, it allows for the ions to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, as shown on the left-hand side of your screen. We can now start examining each of the phases of the cardiomyocyte action potential. Here, we can see a tracing of the electrical activity of the action potential. The x-axis shows the progression of time, while the y-axis follows the charge across the membrane, called the membrane potential, in millivolts. Let's now look at each of these components in detail. At rest, the cardiomyocyte has a charge across the membrane of negative 90 millivolts with the inside of the cell negative relative to the outside. This is called the resting membrane potential. When the cell is stimulated by the electrical activity of pacemaker cells, the first channels to open are fast, voltage-gated sodium channels. These channels allow sodium ions to move from their area of high concentration outside the cell towards the region of low concentration inside the cell. Since sodium ions are cations with a positive charge, this causes the inside of the cell to become less negative. The tracing of the action potential shows an increase in positivity, which is called depolarization. Once the membrane potential reaches positive 20 millivolts, the majority of the voltage-gated sodium channels are inactivated. Therefore, sodium ions are responsible for the depolarization phase of an action potential. Two ions, potassium and calcium, are responsible for the next phase of the action potential. When voltage-gated potassium channels open, potassium rushes out of the cell. At approximately the same time, voltage-gated calcium channels open and calcium rushes into the cell. Since both of the ions are positively charged, there is very little change in the overall membrane potential. As we follow this portion of the action potential, we see a flat stretch in which there is very little change in membrane potential. This phase is called the plateau, and it is unique to cardiomyocytes. Following the plateau, Calcium channels close, but voltage-gated potassium channels remain open. Since potassium ions are positively charged, their efflux leads to a drop in the membrane potential towards a more negative value. This phase of the action potential is called repolarization. Repolarization continues until we once again reach negative 90 millivolts, the membrane potential of a resting cell. Once the resting membrane potential has been restored, the cardiomyocyte action potential is complete. The cell can then be activated again to start the whole process all over again. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope that it has clarified the components of a cardiomyocyte action potential discussed in your classes. Please feel free to view the video as many times as needed to clarify the concepts, and as always, let me know if you have any further questions about the material. Good luck in your studying!